Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia News Science and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of September. India and Singapore sign MOUs on semiconductor digital tech during PM Modi's visit. Pakistan's opposition seeks debate on Balochistan after lawmaker quits over Italy. And Nepal's first Paralympic medalist returns home to Rousey World And now for all the details. Asian country. The leaders agreed to elevate the India-Singapore ties to comprehensive strategic partnership and extensively reviewed various facets of the bilateral relationship covering areas of advanced manufacturing, connectivity, digitalization, healthcare and medicine, skills development and sustainability, a statement by India's foreign ministry said. In his remarks, PM Modi said Singapore is an important part of India's Act East policy. He added that the Southeast Asian country is not only a partner but an inspiration for every developing nation and said India aims to build several such Singapore in India. We want to make Singapore in India. And I am happy that we are in this country. मिलकर प्रयास कर रहे हैं हमारी बीच जो मिनिस्टरियल राउंड टेबल बनी है वो एक पाथ ब्रेकिंग मैकेनिज्म है स्किलिंग डिजिटलाइजेशन मोबिलिटी एडवांस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जैसे सभी कंडक्टर और ए आई हेल्थ केयर सस्टेनेबिलिटी और साइबर सिक्योरिटी जैसे क्षेत्रों में सहयोग की दिशा में ये इनिशिएटिव की पहचान बन गई है Moving on, Pakistan on Thursday called Junagar as a disputed territory and said the region is illegally occupied by India. Speaking during a weekly media briefing, Pakistan's foreign ministry spokesperson Mumta Zehra Baloch said. Islamabad sees the issue of Junagar in historical and legal perspective and added that this city is a part of Pakistan. She said Pakistan has been raising the issue at political and diplomatic forums in order to get a peaceful solution. She further said Islamabad considers the Junagar issue as an unfinished agenda like the issue of Jammu and Kashmir. A princely state in undivided India, Junagar was predominantly Hindu in terms of population, but its ruler, Nawab Muhammad Mahabad Khanji, was a Muslim. The Nawab decided to accede to Pakistan despite the state's geographical location being surrounded by Indian territory and population favoring accession to India. India maintains that Junagar's accession to India was lawful and in accordance with the wishes of the people. After the Nawab fled to Pakistan in November 1947, India organized a plebiscite in February 1948, where over 99% of the population voted to join India, becoming a part of India's western state of Gujarat. New Delhi has maintained Pakistan's claim over Junagar is unreasonable as the matter was settled in 1948 through a plebiscite, adding that Junagar, along with Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, are integral parts of India. Meanwhile, Pakistan's opposition has urged the government to hold a national debate on Balochistan after a senior Baloch leader resigned from the parliament over the worsening situation in the region. Arpot. The opposition on Wednesday called on the Pakistan government led by PM Shehbaz Sharif to hold a national debate on Balochistan a day after veteran Baloch leader Sardar Akhtar Mengal announced his resignation from the parliament over the deteriorating situation in Balochistan. Mengal, in his resignation letter, said the people of the Balochistan province had been consistently marginalized and pushed to the wall. 
The announcement came after over 50 people were killed in Balochistan when Baloch separatists attacked police stations, railway lines and highways on August 25, prompting security forces to launch retaliatory operations. Asad Kesar, a senior PTI leader, said, This is a very alarming thing. If your political figures are discouraged this way, they feel that they have lost respect in their native area because of this parliament, then this parliament has no value. In recent weeks, Balochistan has witnessed several protests against what rights activists describe a pattern of enforced disappearances by Pakistani security forces. In his resignation letter, Mengel had said, the attempts by the people of Balochistan to speak up for their rights or protest were met with hostility. Our people are either silenced, labeled as traitors, or worse, killed, he said. Moving on, residents of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir are fed up with the rising piles of garbage and deteriorating sanitary conditions. Despite the health hazards and inconvenience caused by the neglect, authorities have failed to address the issue. Our report. Residents of Muzaffarabad in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir are irked over inability of government authorities to handle the increasing trash and sewage issues in the region. The unhygienic condition is also providing mosquitoes and diseases a breeding ground amid monsoon season. A local highlighted the garbage depot near the Jama Masjid and the medical ward of the Abbas Institute of Medical Sciences is particularly causing inconvenience to both patients and worshippers. But authorities are least concerned to resolve the issue. <laughs> Locals blame corruption and ignorance in the system have become major challenges, leaving POJK's future in dark, lack of proper roads, health and other basic facilities have also made the occupied region as one of the most backward. 21-year-old Nepal para-athlete Palesha Govardhan, who won the historic bronze medal in Paris Paralympics 2024, returned back home to a rousing welcome on Wednesday. Born without a left palm, Palesha has become the first Nepali athlete to win a medal at an Olympic level. Surrounded by hundreds of supporters and fellow Taekwondo practitioners, Govardhan was greeted with flower garlands as she walked out of the airport terminal while a band of army played drums. She was later taken through various locations of Kathmandu and facilitated at the National Sports Council. The sports minister also joined in to honour the record-setting athlete. Um, Paris 2024, so I kept my promise, I bought a medal back home. And your achievement, Mira Madra, you know, is so big. Now we can proudly say, Nepal, I'm a song of an Olympic medal, sir. And I'm proud. My lady, you know, so big, you know, long wait, one of the medal, Kulagi, Olympic, my so big, it's an impossible justice. They go to Nepal, you know, so they know, okay, one. And I, I believe, so big, young generation, young Taekwondo players, or all players, or Lipani, they know, so big, boy. Like, it's possible, you know? Around seven fishermen were repatriated to India after their release from Sri Lanka, India's diplomatic mission in the island country, informed on Wednesday. The fishermen who belonged to India's coastal city of Rameshwaram were apprehended by the Sri Lankan Navy for allegedly poaching in Lankan waters earlier in July. They were produced before a court and were imprisoned in the island nation. Earlier in August, more than 30 Indian fishermen who were arrested under similar charges were also released by Sri Lankan authorities. While India frequently secures the release of its fishermen, the recurrent arrests and confiscation of boats remain a flashpoint between the two countries. 
The fisherman issue has been a long-standing dispute centered on the right to fish in the Palk Strait, a shallow body of water between the two countries, where fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into while getting their catch and end up spending years in jails. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.